it's another day and it's the final Maker Advent. And this all changed. I had something planned this morning and I had to abandon it. Not because something went wrong, but because something arrived in the post that I wasn't expecting. Now I knew about it, but I wasn't expecting it before Christmas. As we know, the Commodore 64 Ultimate came out about two weeks ago now, roughly. No, just over 10 days. There you go. And it's a good machine. And I'm lucky enough to have one. In fact, I've got two for review at Tom's Hardware. Something else arrived in the post from the same team today. And it is a U-Support breakout. So I'm going to put some images on the screen now. The U-Support on a Commodore 64 is next to the cassette uh, connection. However, on the Ultimate, that's where the breakouts are for the uh, HDMI, Ethernet, USB, that sort of thing. So to break out the U-Support, there is a special board that connects to some pins on the main board and a cable runs through the case and out the back and you can plug in wherever you want. If you've got a Wi-Fi modem you want to plug in, I don't know why, so it's got built-in Wi-Fi, but if you wanted to, you can. In my case, I've got a user port breakout board, which I can use to control GPIO stuff. And that's where we go with this final video. So I've got just to the left of me the Commodore 64 Ultimate, and I've got it wired up. And I'm going to show just a quick bit of video of the setup. So you can see the LED in a breadboard with a resistor connected to some pins on a breakout board, which I got five years, no, nearly six years ago now. Um, that breaks out the pins on the back of Commodore 64's user port into something that I can use with a breadboard. That's then connected to the new breakout board, the Commodore 64 Ultimate, and then the wires are going into the back of the machine. So I'm going to switch over to HDMI capture so you can see what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so we have got the familiar Commodore 64 basic screen there, but I'm just going to flip it around a bit and go into the ultimate and we'll go all the way to the start on this one so you can see what I'm doing. So disk file browser. In the back of the Commodore, I've got a USB drive, just a really cheap one gig drive that I've lying around for ages. And on there, I've got some D64 files, specifically maker.d64. That's a Commodore floppy disk. This disk I created on the Ultimate as a blank disk and then wrote some code and saved it to the virtual disk. So what I'm going to do now is mount the disk. I'm not going to run it. I'm going to mount the disk. And I'm going to type in. This is difficult when you've got a camera in the way. As you can see, I'm making typos. Okay, so let's list the contents of this disk. And we've got many, many iterations of this program, so I kept making mistakes. But the one I'm interested in is LED Merry, LED Merry. So let's load. LED Merry, and it's from drive eight. If you don't put drive eight, it thinks you want to load from tape. Yes, made that mistake a few times today. And let's have a look at the code. So we start off the code with 10 print Merry Maker Advent. A nice message for everyone to have a happy holiday. Enjoy yourselves, however you celebrate it. Enjoy it. Line 20, poke 56579. So in programming your basic, you've got peak and poke. Peak is when you want to look at something. Poke is when you want to change something. In this case, 56579 says, okay, you know those user port pins you got on the back? Set them as outputs. So one means output. So current flows from them. Line 25, print, LED on. Line 30, poke, 56577, one. That means, okay, there is a pin on there called PB0, and that maps to 56577. And one means turn it on. Because there's no delays or sleep in this, we have to use a for loop to keep the Commodore busy before it gets to the next line. So for i equals one to 10,000. So just count to 10,000, then Keep iterating round and round until you get to the next I. Then when you hit 10,000, right, we go to line 50, which is print LED off. Line 60, poke 56570, comma zero. If comma one means on, comma zero means off. So it turns off the GPI open. Line 70, we're just keeping it busy again for I equals one to 10,000. Just, just do a bit of counting for me, comma all. Then line 80, go back to line 10, start the process again. So this is all loaded into memory. So if I type in run and we focus on the user port and breadboard video, we can see the LED is flashing. 
and on the basic output we can see LED on, LED off, and Merry Maker Open. So there we go, that's the code. So this is very early days, I've had this for probably three hours so far. And uh, quite a bit of that time was just me getting to grips with remembering how to do this, because I wrote a blog post on this on my blog. Um, February 2020, so it's been a while since I've done this. So I made quite a few mistakes, hence all the files. In fact, you can see in the code, if I list it again, Can we go 10, 20, 25, then 30? Why not 10, 20, 30, 40? That's because I accidentally put line 20 in twice. And so the second time I put it in would overwrite what was there originally. And I needed to put a print in. So I put in 20 poke 56579,1, then 20 print LED on. So it would never turn the LED on. It would just print that it had. So by adding 25, I had an iteration between 20 and 30 where I could put the line in that I needed. And this is one of the ways when people were coding in basic that they would add extra lines in between. You know, like these days where we can just go into the editor and do a quick little switcheroo and that's it, we're done. It was different back in this day. Remember, this is 1982 code we're looking at. And that is where we leave Maker Advent for this year. We've done 24 videos of a range of topics. It's been a bit eclectic this year, but it's been fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Happy holidays. ta -da.